Hello, I'm Florian Laramendi. I'm architect and a student in engineering at Ecole des Ponts. Hello, I'm Loïs Tavernier. I'm architect and designer. We work on this project uh, at the school EAVT Paris. The article deals with the method of lattice kirigami in order to approximate a catenary arch with interesting geometric and structural properties. Kirigami is different from origami as it enables, in addition of folding, to cut the sheet. It is an interesting method as it is easy to program the cuts. We distinguish two particular techniques of kirigami. The first one, kirigami engineered elasticity, that consists in notching the sheet that locally weaken the material and make it possible to modify its behavior. And that is kirigami that consists in removing materials from the lattice and then bring the cut edges together without the formation of the sheet. Here we have some examples of realizations with different uh, methods of kirigami. For instance, realizations in lattice hinge that use the kirigami engineered elasticity methods and that is Kirigami methods that are still more theoretical and that we have considered for the article. This method we consider is for the first time developed by Castle and Sussman. It consists in making cuts in a hexagonal lattice and then joining the newly formed edges. Then it consists in making mountain and valley folds to obtain a stepped surface. It is characterized by the pores of discontinuity, that means local centers of non-zero Gaussian curvature. The folds are then made perpendicular to the short sides of the incised hexagon. Depending on the directions of the fold, the orientation can be controlled. This principle of step surfaces is extended to a general method called Sigzans by adding a dual triangular lattice to the hexagonal lattice. By removing a hexagon from the lattice and make mountain and valley folds, we can create stepped surfaces with dark possibilities of configurations in all the directions. But if it is possible to generate curved surfaces with different haze, this method doesn't have interesting structural properties. The first configuration that is interesting uh, as we create a double triangular layer. But if we repeat only this configuration, we obtain a flat surface. The research proposed by Annie Lockshera shows how we can change the intrinsic curvature of the folded sheet by modifying the dual hexagonal triangular lattice and keeping the configuration with double triangular layer. The method consists in modifying symmetrically the hexagon center in order to have two different triangular layers on each side. As we can generate double curvature by manipulating triangle ratios, in our research we only focus on surfaces with positive Gaussian curvature and especially on the development of a catenary arch. As the vertex of the module are joined in only one point, it has structural sense to develop nodes on the intradoors of the arch. A method is to generate it with different portions of sphere that change gradually. In this system, only the layer on the intradoors is changed. The first step was to draw the catenary curve and discretize it in equal segments. Then we draw the tangent of the point at the top of the arch and the, and the segment that link to point. These segments enable us to measure the angle of curvature. It is linked to the pattern by the length of the edges and the constant. Then by parametrizing the pattern, it is possible to find the right couple of numbers that correspond to the desired angle with the length chosen by the designer. We can then repeat all the operation for all the arch. Each module is different and depends on the angle of curvature. Every line of modules is characterized by an angle that represents a portion of sphere. By modifi modifying strategically the pattern, we can also reduce the inertia progressively at the top of the arch. 
The arch has been realized with plastic sheet as it is flexible materials which can be folded easily. For the arch implementation and assembly, the principle of lattice kirigami left an empty space in the center of the arch. We were focusing on the exploitation of these free spaces to create a fastening system connecting the module's edge and keeping the effectiveness of structural folds. The last test aims to reduce the size of the strips and the number of fasteners. Arch stacks attached at one point in the middle were the best solution. When the, model, when the module is assembled, only with the strips, it stays flat. And as the modules are closed on the entrails, it makes structural sense to have an element in traction on this part. For the knot, we tightened the three copper wires from the inside and pass them through the edge in order to join the three cables together the shape and do another knot outside the shape. This system is sustainable to traction forces and prevents the shape from opening. The module is still efficient in terms of deployability, allowing compact transport and easy assembly on site. We for the realization, uh, the module assembly is done flat in the first step. Then we do the knot to create the curvature and realize the arch. Here we can see the picture of the final prototype in polypropylene. Now we're working on the project for the Biennale of Architecture in Seoul 2021. We create the stand of Mark Mimama, Mark Mimam with this system but with a more sustainable materials approach, we use a bioplastic sheet made from corn stretch. Thank you. Thank you.